this overall idea of creating video for people rather than video for businesses is probably what I would go back and try to focus on five years ago. I think treating people as people rather than businesses is always going to work. Guys, welcome back. This is another interview with Kyle Weber from Superside, where we are talking about all things B2B video. Kyle, thank you so much for joining. And the first question to you is, how are you guys doing video in general as a company? How are you uh, utilizing this medium? Well, first off, thanks for having me. And uh, I, that's a bit of a loaded question. We're doing a lot with video at Superside right now, um, both for ourselves and for our customers, uh, I should say. Um, but mainly on our internal marketing team, the way that we're using video is, um, the first way is we're, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, we put out about two videos per uh, week. And a lot of the time, those YouTube videos are built to support our blog. Um, we'll re repurpose uh, the content on our blog that's doing well. We'll craft a video, um, either taking that same sort of content or building off of it, focusing on different companies that you could look at as examples of what we're teaching in the blog itself. Um, and we're finding that's doing a lot to uh, support SEO on our website. Um, obviously, we all know that um, video has become a big part of SEO strategies with video search results and things like that. Um, these YouTube videos then get clipped, of course, for social media. Um, we also do condensed versions of those videos for social. Um, and then the other way that we're using video is uh, we're putting out about three to four ads per month, um, which is quite a heavy volume of ads, but we're seeing a lot of great success with those. Uh, and then the last way would just be product videos. So we put out a lot of videos about our Superside platform, about the services we provide um, both as like a pre-conversion uh, content piece. And then we also have some onboarding videos for post-conversion. Right. And w Kyle, where do you, where are you seeing biggest gains with, um, with your videos that you're putting out? Now there will be probably, uh, obviously with the, uh, with the ads video that those, uh, easily will perform the best. But if we were to, for example, look at the organic piece, like w do, do you see, um, certain videos performing better than others? Maybe it's serious based, may maybe just more individual pieces of content. Mm -hmm. I know what I am going to have to actually say the ads now, of course, as you say, like those are going to perform the best because there's budget behind them, but we've actually seen a lot of our ads perform well as just organic pieces of social video. Um, all of our ads, well, I, not all of our ads, but a lot of our ads right now, um, they have a sort of like UGC, almost like TikTok like style to them. Um, our structure is essentially that we're opening with about a 20 to 25 second sort of skit that will apply to some sort of like pain point or a service that we offer before getting into the pitch. And that format has been great for the ads themselves, but we've also seen a lot of these videos perform really well as just social posts. Um, even our ads are almost getting like the engagement of an organic post in that um, we get a lot of comments on them. We get a lot of likes, we get a lot of shares, everything that you'd expect to see from a regular TikTok video on our paid ads. Great video equals creative, creative, creative. For sure. And it makes my job a lot more fun as well. Like if I can make a video where like we're, we're front loading it with some fun skit, um, I'm having a good time. And if I'm having a good time making the video, chances are it's going to be a better video um, in the long run. And in terms of the metric, uh, Kyle, <clears throat> what, what, do you, uh, what do you really care about? Uh, comments, likes, um, or other things? Four mm -hmm. videos. Yeah. Uh, you kind of care about all of it, to be honest, in, in different <laughs> ways. Like, I guess it really depends on the goal. Like, as I say, with a lot of the ads that we're putting out and that's the, the video that I'm probably closest to is the ads. Um, so I guess that's why a lot of my answers are going to be revolving around, around those. But, um, with our ads specifically, like what I look for is that high level engagement to show that the ads actually getting through to people. So the shares, the likes, the positive comments, even the bad comments are good sometimes as well. We've, uh, we put out some ads that have been, I don't know if controversial is the right word, but they've sort of struck a nerve with portions of our audience. And it's created almost like a battleground within the comments between some of our customers and, and other customers, uh, depending on if they're like a marketer or a creative themselves. Um, so those are all good, like high level metrics for like the awareness part of things, but we're also looking at things like cost per lead, 
of course, clicks, number of leads. We had an ad come out recently that um, within a month, we scored about 1,200 new leads. Um, so that was one that like performed amazing. Um, our cost per click, our cost per lead were way down. And essentially with each of our ads, like we're, we're just trying to beat the one that came before it um, and like improve each month. And, and so far we've been on like a really good run of outperforming our best. Uh, until recently, 1,200 uh, leads in a month is pretty tough, tough to beat. beat. Yeah. <laughs> and that's YouTube pre-roll. Uh, and do you uh, do other platforms? Yeah, it's not just YouTube pre-roll. Um, that's like Instagram ads, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, all those. On to Joe. I'm going to... Uh, where, Joe, you have questions, I'm sure. Uh, on the on the kind of UG, so I love what you guys are doing. I've been following Thank it for you. a while with your with your ads on the you know, on the kind of UGC feel. I think you guys are probably very unique in the B two B space. That mm -hmm. there's very few companies that are doing that kind of like UGC feel style ads. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's I can I can name maybe like one or two others that are doing that kind of style. Um, but it makes it makes a lot of sense. But I'd, I'd be curious to kind of hear your thoughts on I guess the higher levels of production, which I'm sure you guys also do um yeah. versus the kind of ugc and like how do you how do you guys balance that but and if you can go into it at all like for clients as well like how do you balance that ugc versus this should be a studio level production video mm -hmm. i think it all depends on where your video is going to live so i would attribute the success of our sort of ugc style ads to the fact that they're going on instagram they're going on linkedin they're going on facebook a lot of these places where the type of content that you're going to be used to seeing is going to look like our ads. Um, that forces the user to stop for a second and say like, oh, what is this? Is this even an ad or is this like a meme that I might want to send to one of my friends? So that sort of um, disguise, I guess you could call it, is a way that we, like it acts as a hook almost in itself. Um, so for the UGC stuff, uh, it's really dependent on like the, the channel that it's going to be on. And I think we would tend to lean more towards like higher production value for something that is lower in the funnel. Um, as I mentioned, we do a lot of platform videos. So anything that's involving like, um, onboarding for our customers, how to use our, uh, design ops platform, uh, things like that, because we, the UGC stuff is great for like empathizing and creating that connection. Whereas the higher polished stuff I think is important for showing the pedigree of our brand, uh, showing that we have that sort of in our arsenal. Um, so they a key message these, almost. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and it's also about like, it's really about just knowing your audience and like the number one rule with content, um, is just hitting your audience where they're at. So if they're on social, make a video that looks more like a social video, but if they've become a customer and they're, they're learning the tools and learning the workflows, give them something that's uh, a bit more polished, a bit more refined to show that we can offer that level of quality to them once they get started. Um, I, I, I guess generally for, for YouTube, if we kind of switch gears a little bit, because that's where obviously yeah. some of you and I've seen some of the videos, like obviously quality wise, it, it looks, you know, look, mm -hmm. they look really good, really polished. Thank What's you. been the general, the general strategy to YouTube? I, mean, I know you touched on it slightly earlier on, but like, what's the what's the general approach there, and how are you mm -hmm. ideating through you know content for YouTube? Let's start there first. Yeah, so starting our YouTube channel, the main strategy was kind of to a, approach it as guaranteeing a slow build. So we use tools like VidIQ to find topics um, that we're already covering that will perform well with like YouTube SEO. We want to make sure before we do a video that there is an audience for it on YouTube. Um, so we lean heavily towards like the SEO verified topics uh, in the beginning so that we can slowly build an audience and the kind community. of yeah. build up that community. And also like so that YouTube, I guess, sort of sees us as a legitimate channel. Um, obviously, like there is you want to get a million views, you want to go viral, things like that. But uh, to just start a channel with that sort of approach didn't make a whole lot of sense to me personally. So we've had this slow and steady build over time and, uh, we're at over 3000 subscribers. Now, um, we have that built in audience, our YouTube search, um, as a channel itself, 
has been steadily growing over time. So we know that people on the platform are finding our videos easier than ever before. So with that, now is about the time that we're, we're taking some more liberties with being more creative with our topics, taking more risks, going against maybe what vidIQ is showing and going for something that maybe has a chance to go a bit more viral. We've got a video coming out um, in the next two weeks, I think, um, that tells the story of the Nike logo. We've never done any sort of like design history or anything like that, but um, there's a new Nike movie coming out soon. So we're gonna ride the coattails of that a little bit, uh, edge more into like storytelling. Um, because me personally, like I'm on YouTube all the time and I love a good story. Uh, so we're edging more towards that sort of thing right now, now that we've established an audience. Um, and you'll probably expect to see maybe a little less of the how-to stuff um, as we build further from this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just, just real quick before I pass it back over to Sergey, I can see yeah. that I'm just on the channel now. I can see that you're doing, you're doing shorts as well. Are you taking, are those shorts, are they from your long form content or is, are they natively created for shorts, if that makes sense? Uh, yes and no. So we will script mm -hmm. a full length YouTube video and then we'll condense that into a minute long version as well. We'll take the ah, best parts okay. of it and then synthesize it. Um, chat GPT has been great for that. We'll feed in our video script and say, turn this into a minute long script rather than Come a five minute down. script. And obviously like that's not enough to just go to market with. We'll do uh, edits from there, but that's one way that we're leveraging AI to get all this video out as well. Kyle, you mentioned, um, starting a YouTube channel this way didn't make sense to you. Uh, what did you mean by that? Uh, in terms of, I think the way that you guys approached YouTube channel is by picking the topics that are already pre-validated, that already performed well with vidIQ primarily, and doing probably some title research, and using that as a primary driver of which video to make next. Uh, how is this approach was more unusual to you? Um, and, and if yes, which one would you prefer, or which one would make more sense uh, when you were just starting out with a YouTube channel? What I thought was a sensible way to start the channel would be to build on what has been validated topic wise versus starting with like this blank slate and just trying to hit home runs. Like let's, let's load the bases versus just trying to knock it out of the park with every single video on some ridiculous topic that mm. could potentially go big. Go viral. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. So like right. stuff like uh, a lot of our early on videos were like how to's when it comes to design uh, or like content marketing, things like that. Um, those to me felt like very safe topics to build on slowly and steadily. Whereas we have a couple of videos like last Halloween, we did a series of design horror stories and like they, they were like high production type skits and uh, something like that. It, it was a lot of fun. It took a lot of work. Um, if that was the first video on our channel, I feel like maybe like 12 people would have watched it because it just doesn't have that like SEO value to it uh, to get out there on YouTube without having an audience established already. Yeah, you're kind of, I guess in a way, you're kind of letting like, I guess like an investing perspective, you're letting small bets For compound sure. and then you're like, you're going to try the riskier bets later on with the, yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. It was all about ideas. like a safe way to build an audience slowly and yeah. steadily. And then once we have that audience, that gives us a bit more creative freedom to uh, come up with a bit more ridiculous ideas now that we have a viewer base. Quite a lot of companies do have a challenge with figuring out which videos exactly to post on YouTube? Do they just duplicate what they have on the website? Do they just come up with something new um, and, and, and developing a certain theme around it, which of course helps because when YouTube puts you in a specific certain category of this is the channel for this, or this is a channel for uh, design or for marketing or for everything else, where there are certain videos that you guys have produced over time that helped you figure out this path of th these are the videos we should be making or you're still in the process. It changes over time uh, with our strategy and like what I mentioned with building that audience. So early stages of YouTube, first off, YouTube is, is, is very hard to find like bottom funnel uh, validation, I guess. Like there's, there's tons of validation there for like awareness and, and things like that. But connecting YouTube to the like bottom line is not the easiest thing to do. Um, so That's true. 
the best the best thing that in my mind we we could do was tie YouTube to success on the website in some sort of way. And we found that any video that we embedded into a blog would automatically help the SEO of that blog. So the way that we were choosing video topics early on was finding blogs that we definitely wanted to draw attention to. Um, and that could really use that SEO boost. We would do a video and we would see that help out tremendously. Um, so that was one way that we were picking topics. We'd also pick topics based on like what blogs were performing the best that would let us know that there was an appetite for that uh, topic. So we'd push that further with a video, um, not just regurgitating what was in the blog, but building off of it with examples and things like that. Um, so our blog traffic and our blog metrics were actually a key indicator of what videos we would make mm -hmm. uh, when it came to YouTube. When it comes to other things like product videos, uh, we're typically just talking to customers. We're thinking about the gaps in understanding when it comes to our offering, filling in those gaps with uh, videos. We've got a bunch of product tour videos that are out and we have more on the way that give more of a glimpse into what the customer experience is like with Superside. And then for the ads, uh, the ads are the most fun. Uh, the ads when we're thinking about uh, things to cover and, and coming up with concepts and things like that. Um, it's really based on pain <laughs> a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, trying to think of the situations that our customers find themselves in, dialing up the comedy in those to 100, and then uh, presenting them back to the customer. And I, I think that's why those videos, there's another reason why, the, or there's a number of reasons why those videos have been successful. But I think the biggest one, we see this in the comments is, people feel very seen by those. Um, I think we've done a really good job of connecting deeply with our audience in a way that's not typical of a business. Like it's not like superficial, like we understand what you're going through. It's we've lived Real. this ourselves and you can tell, like I, I'm, I'm in content marketing and, and video production right now, but uh, I started my career as a junior designer. So like, no one knows better than me what junior designers go through. And that comes through in our ads. We have that lived experience to build off of. And a lot of companies, uh, what you're describing, Kyle, is a lot of companies do know that uh, we invested so much money into written content, into blogs and articles that perform well. And uh, um, it makes sense in many ways. Uh, it doesn't seem like it is rocket science to take that and use it as a basis or baseline for a video script and create videos. Yet, so few companies right now do it. Uh, your opinion, just your opinion, why do you think that is? Why so few companies are uh, using this tactic? So the one that you'll hear, the, there's a bunch of reasons. The ones that you'll hear the most often are, uh, I don't know how to get started with video. Um, the second one uh, is, it's very hard to tie video, as I mentioned with YouTube, to the bottom line. Those are the two that I hear most often reading blogs and things like that. Those are the ones that I think are reported the most often in surveys and, and that sort of thing. Um, but I had a long conversation with uh, Melissa Matlins. Uh, she's the VP of marketing at Vimeo. And we talked about this in, in one of our videos uh, with Superside that marketers specifically, they should be used to learning new things like video. Um, they should also be used to finding ways to validate tactics outside of simply just the bottom line. Yet with video, they don't give video that, that same grace as they would with like learning social media and social media ads. And I think the reason for that is people just don't want to go on camera. Uh, and no one wants to own up to that because it's absolutely silly. Uh, I think that's the main reason why companies don't do video is you, it happens all the time. I, I used to work uh, at a marketing agency and we talk all the time about like, we need to do video. We need to do video. I'd get out the camera. I'd say, okay, who wants to be on video? And it's all those people who wanted video suddenly don't want video all that much or like they're too busy to do it now. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just goofy because like we're, we're on video all the time. We, we do zoom calls, after work, like during the pandemic, we were always on calls with friends, things like that. We should all be used to video by now, but uh, still doesn't seem to be the case for a lot of people in marketing. 
Before we get to the fireside questions, I wanted to see if uh, a fantastic answer, Kai, by the way. Uh, Thanks. Anything else, Joe, you wanted to add before we get into fireside or shall we move on to that stage? Really quickly on, on TikTok as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a channel for you guys. I know you have not looked into it heavily, but I know you guys are using it um, as, a, as a channel. How are you... Th- how are you- how are you approaching TikTok as a channel? Uh, is it more of a kind of career, like hiring play for you guys? Or how are you approaching that as a channel? Uh, I I really don't know. I'm not part of the TikTok strategy okay. really at all. So um, yeah, I, I can't really shed light on that, unfortunately. Okay, fair enough, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. Okay, we'll roll into the quick fire. And cool. on to the fire, free fire, uh, fireside, fireside questions. Um, the first one is Kyle in, um, if, what was one of the most worthwhile investments that you in video that you've ever made? I think this whole uh, like UGC style of our ads, I guess, kind of just taking a leap of faith and trying something new. That was probably the best investment uh, or the most the most worthwhile investment that we've made so far, in my opinion. Um, It really started out with just something extremely simple. We just had an idea to to open up one of our videos with, and it like to call it a skit would be like overblowing the thing. Um, It was just like just a different way of starting a video than what we had tried before, and people liked it. So we're like, let's try this again. Let's push it a little bit, Um, and it went from just like a five second intro to now like half of our ad is literally just a skit. Um, before we make the pitch at all. And as I said, like month over month, we're seeing improvements. Uh, We're seeing our cost per lead go down. We're seeing our clicks go up. Uh, And it was all from just trying one thing once and then pushing it further. And for the audience, and I should have said that earlier, UGC stands for? User-generated content. So that's our our UGC, it's our stuff is UGC style. Uh, in that it's not true UGC. These are not customers making videos for us. But it's, it's not us re- yeah. yeah, it's us recording our ads on an iPhone. And that's that's it. We don't have fancy lighting. We don't have fancy mics or anything like that. It's just us and an iPhone. Mm-hmm. If you are making video content five years ago uh, with everything that you know now, what advice would you give your younger self? Five years ago, that would be... 2017, 2018, what would you tell yourself you should, you should not do things like that? It's really hard to say because a lot of what I think works right now in video is a somewhat recent development from the pandemic. Uh, Things like working from home being like wild or uh, largely adopted and the always connected nature of social media. I think those two things came together to kind of reshape the B2B audience in a lot of ways. We put out a video or we put out a video recently that uh, talks about this, that the B2B audience right now isn't like trapped in a cubicle anymore, just sitting there waiting to to see an ad. Um, Your ad hits them when they're at home on the couch, listening to Spotify, petting their dog, that sort of thing. And, and with that, you need to treat your audience more like people rather than these like corporate drones. And so while that's a strategy right now that I think works, this overall idea of creating video for people rather than video for businesses is probably what I would go back and and try to focus on five years ago. Um, whether like I, I think treating people as people (laughs) rather than businesses is always going to work. Um, I think it works now more than ever, but it would have worked five years ago as well, I think. Now, this is a more of a harder question, but uh, let's see if if, uh, if, uh, maybe it's not that hard. What do you believe about video that other people might find insane? That other people might uh, find insane. So you're looking for a a really hot take here. Yes, it's a Peter Thiel style questions, uh, question that he likes to ask, uh, used to like to ask people yeah. when he heard startup pitch, uh, that kind of thing. Okay, 
Um, I, I don't know how hot of a take this is, but I think every content strategy and every content workflow should start with a video. Um, I think the first thing that you should do is make a video, make the video because you can clip that down for social media. So you're covering your social bases. You're covering like your, your overall, like YouTube base, I guess, or your, uh, website embed base by having a video. You can run your video through something like Descript and get a transcript and then turn that into a blog extremely fast. You can probably just run that ch transcript through chat GPT these days and uh, get a blog out of it. Uh, and then suddenly you have three pieces of content that you're generating interest from. You'll get feedback from your audience from those three pieces being the, the blog embed, the blog itself, the social video. Um, you'll verify whether there's an appetite for this. Maybe it's something that you can push further with like a playbook or a guide or something. Um, so with that answer, really just, I, I believe that video should be the foundation of every content strategy because so many things come from video that will push you further ahead. Um, that is a hot take. It's legitimately a very interesting, new and fresh perspective that we haven't heard so far from oh, anybody fantastic. we have interviewed. <laughs> so it is, yeah, it like I, I think is. a lot of content strategies, and I think this is probably tied to what I said before about people just really not wanting to go on camera. I think a lot of content strategies are still starting with the written word. And that makes sense, I guess, for like SEO purposes, but we know that video helps with SEO as well. And uh, definitely not from a social as much as they just, used to. Definitely not on social. Yeah, definitely, definitely not on social. But yeah, people aren't reading as much as they used to. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, the website, The Ringer. And from what I've read about them is like, I think like 80 to 90% of their engagement is on their podcasts, on their videos, not on their written articles. Uh, but it started out as, as a blog that was all written. And I like, while this is a media website focusing on like pop culture and sports, as I say, like that B2B audience, they're not just mindless drones sitting in an office. Uh, they want something enjoyable. So I think, and this isn't a hot take, like everyone, I feel like every like CEO has gone through, like, we should be a media company uh, <laughs> in the last couple of years. But I think there is like value to that thinking um, because people engage with that stuff and engagement's like the number one thing that you should be trying to do regardless of who your audience is. Last short question, Kyle, uh, your biggest challenge with making videos, producing them consistently? biggest challenge with getting videos out consistently is really just that <laughs> like it's a lot of work um it's a lot of work especially when you've set your volume goals to what we've set ours at like two youtube videos per week three to four ads per month throw in a couple of like product videos and uh like curveballs here and there uh, to support things that other parts of the company are doing it's it's a lot of work uh yeah. And not to, uh, I, I guess I have to do a plug at some point, but that's why Superside does offer video as a service. Um, we know that companies struggle to get it done. And so in the same way that we offer, uh, design services, we offer video as well. Like the UGC style ads that we do for ourselves. Um, we can do those for, for anybody. Uh, and yeah, I, I, it's, it's a relatively new service, but it's one that I'm expecting a lot of things from just because we see it ourselves. It's, it's tough to keep up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and uh, we spoke a lot about, uh, with, with folks that we've, uh, interviewed and we, uh, we, we spoke internally about this evolution of marketing. Uh, we started with first was the internet, then we had email, then blogging became very popular. It was everybody started to have you needed one, even if you were a terrible writer, you had to have it to have marketing. Uh, there was this intermediary period of podcasts slash webinars, which can't be compared to the impact of blogging. But then video started and video with 4G, with 5G networks, uh, as it was short form with like a YouTube, like TikTok and shorts appeared. Do you see video as such a big order of magnitude change in marketing as blogging? If not, how would you slot it in into this whole overall evolution of marketing? I think it's going to be bigger than blogging, honestly. Um, that's maybe that's a, a hotter take, but 
one of the biggest things that I heard uh, a couple of months ago, actually it was probably last year, um, was hearing that like Gen Z was using TikTok as a search, as a uh, search engine. And that just, that just blew my mind. <laughs> um, and like, if, if that's the case and that's going to continue to unfold, um, video is going to be like one of the most important things that you do in your, your marketing strategy, uh, video content, like every social media channel, they're building themselves around video, like Instagram, it's a video platform now. And, and that says something when all these companies are tailor tailoring their platforms around video and people are using video for search now, uh, you have to do it. You have to get over this fear of being on camera. You have to learn it, even though it's hard. Um, you have to overcome the obstacles the same way I compare it to social media, really. Like I remember going to a grocery store and buying a thing of blueberries and seeing like a Facebook, uh, URL on this <laughs> container of blueberries. I'm like, man, everybody's got a Facebook page, even freaking blueberries. And, uh, I think videos just got to be treated in the same way. Absolutely. Joe, other uh, last questions that we haven't touched, uh, we wanted to. I don't think for me, I think we've, we've covered a ton of ground, I'd say in the last 30 minutes, um, which has been, it's been amazing, Carl. I've, yeah, I really appreciate you jumping on and, uh, and, and coming on to the interview. Cool. Yeah, this has been a ton of fun. Uh, I, I'm that was really fantastic. excited to be here and uh, hopefully I, I sound smart. 